if you find this sleep story helpful or interesting, then give it a thumbs up. Leave any comments that you've got below. And if you aren't already, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you can receive notifications of when future sleep stories go live. I have dozens and dozens of stories already on my channel that you can go and search. I also release new stories every single week. So I hope you enjoy this story. Just take a moment to close your eyes and allow yourself to begin to relax. And as you begin to relax, so I'm just going to tell this sleep meditation in the background. And while I tell this sleep meditation, you can comfortably drift asleep. And I don't know whether you'll drift asleep faster to the sounds of my words or the spaces between my words. But as you drift asleep, so you can just listen along in the background. And you can have a sense of being at a friend's house and you're playing with the friend's children and you've helped them to build a fort out of pillows and blankets and chairs and you've built two forts You've helped them to build one and then you've built one for yourself. And then you're using some scrunched up paper and trying to attack each other's forts by throwing the paper. Seeing if you can manage to strike each other as you run from the fort, having to go and capture some coloured paper like flags and then run back to the fort. And the person that manages to run around and capture the most flags is the winner. And the flags are dotted around the house and the garden. And you rush around and sometimes sneak, playing this game with the children. And then after a while, when one of you has won, you take some time to rest. And you all rest back in your thoughts, relaxing down, noticing how the light is dimmer and just more comforting and relaxing inside the forts. And the forts are so soft with cushions and blankets. And you have battery powered fairy lights hanging in the fort. And you turn those lights on. And as you gaze at the fairy lights, lying back, relaxing on the cushions and blankets, under the dim light in the fort, just let your eyes close for a moment. And as your eyes close, so you begin to breathe in and breathe out. Noticing the out-breaths being longer than the in-breaths as you relax comfortably. And while you begin to comfortably relax, so you notice the muscles around your face relaxing, your cheek muscles relaxing, the muscles around your eyes softening and relaxing. The muscles around the forehead, the temple, down the side of your face, all softening, relaxing. And with each out breath, just noticing that relaxing, spreading down the neck, 
and down the arms, and down the back, relaxing and softening into the cushions and the blankets, noticing the sensations of the hands touching the blankets, the occasional slight cool breeze blowing from the garden into the house and into your fort and just blowing gently against your face as you continue relaxing and as that breathing deepens so the stomach muscles relax and the legs relax And you find your mind almost focusing on the word relax with each outbreath. As if somehow that's just resonating in your mind's eye. As you relax after being energetic, playing around running around with those children. And while you drift comfortably relaxed, with that word in your mind, relax. Relax on each outbreath. You find that that seems to be all your mind is focused on. While that breathing happens automatically and comfortably. And you find your mind beginning to drift and dream. And as your mind begins to drift and float comfortably into a sleep. So you have the strangest experience. That you're in the back of what's almost like a little caravan. You can hear the clippity clop of horses' hooves. And you're aware that this caravan is being pulled along by some horses and you can feel the gentle rocking and movement as that caravan is pulled along by those horses, the sound of the wheels going around as if they're going around on a mud track and you glance out of one of the windows of the caravan and surprised to see that the grass around you seems to be taller than you are. And you put your head almost totally to the window to get a good look up at that grass and to try and see the sky, to try and process what you can see. And as you do, you can see that there are trees towering overhead out of that grass, almost like skyscrapers arching way overhead. You can see bees, almost a third the size of your caravan, buzzing past, flying to dandelions, flying off to other flowers, And you can find this a curious experience. And so you look out the front and you see that it looks like there are horses at the front of the caravan. And you wonder why yourself, the caravan, 
these horses are so small. And then the horses turn and start to head into woods. And as they head into the woodland, so the sound of the wheels changes on the dirt. The sounds outside begin to change, sound a bit more muffled. You can hear the rustling of the leaves high overhead. Sounds of birds in the trees. And you can feel every bump as those horses carefully navigate the roots of the trees that are cutting across the path. And you look out to see if there's anyone driving and realize that there's no one there. The horses just seem to know where they're going and what they're doing. After a while, they turn off the path and they start to head up towards the trees, following one of the tree roots. And next to the tree root is what looks a bit like a rabbit hole. And the horse and cart travel in through that hole. And as that horse and cart heads into the hole, so candles on the outside of the cart spring to life. The flames just light up, illuminating and making the tunnel glow and you can hear a slight echoey sound of the cart and of the horse's hooves. You can notice the way the candlelight dances on the walls of this tunnel and after what seems like ages you notice the tunnel opening up into a vast cavern. And then the horse and cart comes to a stop. And you leave the caravan. You walk outside that caravan to have a look around. You take one of the candles from the side of the cart. You move it around. You walk towards the edges of this cavern. Walking towards the walls to get a good look at where you are. And you realise that you seem to be in the base of the tree seem to be in the trunk of the tree. And you can hear high above you the slight reverberating sound as the wind blows on the outside of the tree. That wooden, almost instrument-like sound. And then you notice some green, sparkling, glowing lights high above you. And the candle can't illuminate that high. And so you just watch as those green, glowing lights spiral around and appear to be getting closer and closer.
and then those spiraling lights start having a slight buzz to them. And then a fairy that's about the same size as you lands just in front of you. Those wings humming and pulsating and then relaxing and spreading those wings out. And those wings catch the light of the flickering candle and sparkle in multiple colours. And the fairy begins to explain that today is a special day of the year and that you've been brought here for a special occasion. And you're curious what that occasion is. And they explain that it's the summer solstice And that when the time is right, the sun will be just at the right point in the sky. And a light will shine into this cavern. And will illuminate a certain point in the cavern. And that point, there'll be a doorway for you to pass through. And that you don't yet know what's through that door. But that you should trust this fairy. That they'll be with you, they'll guide you on a journey. And as you wait for that time of day. You can notice just the faintest hint of light beginning to shine into the tree. And you're still curious how you've ended up so tiny. And the fairy says that doesn't matter, that this moment is what's meant to be. And just as that sunlight lines up with the hole in the tree, so a beam of light bursts through, illuminating dust particles in the air, twinkling and sparkling, and illuminating a certain point on the trunk on the far side. And you head over to that illuminated area. You open the door, and the other side of the door, you see a slide, and the fairy tells you to jump, and so you jump onto that slide, and spin around and spin around, following that slide down deeper and deeper under the tree. And once you're deeper under the tree, that slide smooths out and you gradually come to a halt and you find yourself in the strangest cavern. You can hear the sound of dripping water, the sound of flowing water. And as you look around, you notice Somehow there's light illuminating this cavern. And it's just a soft light, just a gentle glow. But it seems to be illuminating crystals throughout this cavern.
and you notice the most beautiful blue river flowing, bubbling underground here and you see what looks like a leaf and the fairy says to climb onto that leaf and you climb on that leaf resting on that river the fairy holds on to the stalk of the leaf you hear the buzzing of the fairy's wings as the fairy guides that leaf boat along this river and then you begin to hear the sound of faster running water and you can see some slight rapids up ahead and the fairy navigates you carefully down those rapids jumping, twisting, steering through those rapids as you hold on in that leaf with a feeling almost like you're on a powerboat and then those rapids calm down and that river widens into the most beautiful lake and above this lake it's illuminated by glowing green circle of mushrooms with an intense green glow and the fairy guides the boat over to the shore and you can see a white mushroom with a pink crown and white spots and the fairy tells you to go to that mushroom and so you head over toward that mushroom and as you get closer so you notice that the mushroom appears to have a door in it so you open the door walk inside that mushroom to find that all around the walls inside this mushroom are books and there's multiple rows of books stretching all the way up the stalk and you go over and begin to take a look at those books and the fairy explains that this is a secret library and this is the entrance way to that secret library it's the library of the knowledge and wisdom of nature that it contains profound knowledge the knowledge that nature uses and understands the world by that the fairies use that gnomes use and the fairy tells you that to understand the knowledge in this library to see it how it truly is they need to make you a drink and so they slice off a piece of that mushroom they chop that into smaller pieces they boil up 
a little bit of the water from the lake. They fly up to the green mushroom that's glowing on the ceiling. They slap the green mushroom, creating a slight green mist. They gather some of that green mist. Head back down to the boiling water. Add that green mist into the water. And then that water begins to turn electric blue. As the two mushrooms mix together. And then they put that electric blue drink to one side. And as it cools, so you notice a slight thick white mist seeming to form over the top of that electric blue drink. Almost like a heavy mist that's gently frothing over the top of the cup and down the sides. And the fairy looks you square in the eyes and tells you, you'll enjoy this drink and the experience you're about to have. Be prepared for the knowledge. And you blow the top of the drink blowing that white mist away. You smell that sweetest of smells. And then you gulp that drink back in one. And then the fairy says, there's a chair over there. It's the most comfortable chair you'll ever sit in. Just take a moment to sit down in that chair while I count back from ten and on the count of one you'll be one with the knowledge a one with the library you'll have access to all the knowledge here and the knowledge this is connected to And the fairy begins to count ten, nine, eight. And as they count, so your eyes begin to just feel heavier and heavier. Your shoulders, your body feels heavier and more relaxed. You find yourself drifting deeper and deeper into the experience feeling so comfortable and compelled to want to go with the experience. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And on the count of one, you feel a tingle through your body. You feel a sense of your eyes opening. And as they open, so you notice the movement, the vividness of the colours. You notice there seems to be connections between things. In ways that you can't understand or explain in words but movement doesn't just seem to move you but the world around you seems to move with you you have this sense of being able to feel your connection with the fairy with this library as you gaze up it's almost as if the roof of this mushroom has vanished and that the roof 
of wherever you are has vanished. You gaze up and you can just see a blanket of stars stretching in all directions. You see the most beautiful shooting stars, fizzing greens, blues, pure white shooting stars. And as you touch the side of the mushroom, so you begin to notice connections illuminating around you. You notice a white pulsing near your hand, a white pulsing on the mushroom, and that pulsing down through the base of the mushroom, and almost like watching lightning spread out from the mushroom. You see that there are many connections from this mushroom, and almost as if you have x-ray vision, you see mushrooms in other locations sparkle with that white electricity almost as if you're seeing this network from the perspective of the mushroom and you realize that this mushroom isn't just a single mushroom it covers a vast area with tens of thousands of similar little library systems. And that this mushroom has connection with all the plant life. It communicates with all other life and seems to be the communication network, the network that keeps the forests alive, that keeps gardens alive, meadows alive. And the fairy, who now seems to have a glow around them, and whose wings seem to beat, as if time itself is beating, explains to you that all the knowledge in all the books and in all of the libraries is being communicated directly into you here. Almost psychically being communicated. And you have this feeling, almost like a slight lightheadedness, as all of that Knowledge becomes a part of who you are. And the fairy explains that it's important to be able to transfer this knowledge through species and transfer it through time. And so you've been chosen at this time of year, the only time of year the doorway is illuminated, to be able to take this knowledge and put it to good use, and to help to restore the balance in nature And while you're accessing this knowledge, you begin to see how far the knowledge of the mushrooms spreads. You begin to see foxes roaming around, almost like shapes, almost like psychic projections somewhere outside of yourself, almost as if you're seeing the world like some vast pencil drawing 
where you can see through everything, but you can make everything out at the same time. And your brain is somehow processing all of this. You can see hummingbirds darting into flowers. You can see woodpeckers up in trees. You can see the distant leaping and splashing of a humpback whale. As you realise how far this mushroom spreads and communicates. And then after a while The effects of that drink begin to fade. You begin to feel more relaxed. You relax back into that seat. And then after the effects have faded, so you open your eyes in this seat and find this mushroom has gone back to normal. And the fairy gives you a tiny jar and tells you there's a mix of the mushrooms in that jar. And that that will give you a future sense of the world around you. That if you use that before bed, when you're back at your normal size. It'll be just like swallowing a pill, but it'll be able to keep you permanently connected with the world around you, almost having a deep sense of connection with nature A sense of being a part of nature and helping to keep balance and harmony. And as a full sized person, the effects won't be so extreme or intense, but you needed this extreme, intense experience so that you'll really appreciate the slightly more subtle experience you'll have taking that small dose when you're a full-size person. And the fairy shows you out of this mushroom and takes you back to that leaf boat and powers that leaf boat up the rapids, back to the calmer part of that river, along that river, back towards the way you came in, and you and the fairy leave this area, and then you find your way back to that horse and caravan and climbing into the caravan the horse instinctively begins its journey back the way it came and on arrival back in the garden you awaken in that fort And you can hear the children playing in the background. You wonder how long you slept for. 
you think about the strange dream that you've just had? And then you notice that in the palm of your hand is a tiny little capsule And it's see-through, and you can see the contents. And you realise what it is. And you realise that this experience was more than just a dream. And so you head outside to look out in the garden. And you can see the route that you took and that horse and cart. You can see the view that you could see from the caravan in the back of that horse and cart. You can even notice the small, what looks like hoof prints and wheel tracks heading down and off into the woodland and you decide to follow that and see where it was that you went and you find your way to the tree and you can see the root into that tree and you wonder whether this was all real and that night you settle down to sleep and dream. But just before you go to sleep, you take that pill, you eat that little container. And it's really small and easy to take. And then while you drift asleep, so you begin to feel that connection with the world around you forming. Only this time, the combination is a bit more subtle, but longer lasting. You can feel that connection forming through your mind, through your body. A sense of how to communicate with animals how to almost intuitively understand the world around you. And you wake up the next morning. And as you go out for a walk, you walk down the street. You see a cat on a wall. You think about that cat walking towards you. And the cat seems to understand you and walks along the wall carefully, gracefully, perching on the wall near you, reaching its head out for you to stroke its head. And so you stroke that cat's head, stroke behind its ear, rub its back, its sides. It jumps down onto the ground flops on its side, exposes its belly. You rub that cat's belly for a while. You can hear that cat purring. And you continue walking along the street. And when you get to the end of the road, and you're going to cross the road and go into the park. You see someone else standing there to cross the road with their dog. And you gaze over at the dog. And in your mind, you tell the dog to sit. And notice the dog sits. And you see the dog's tail wagging gently. And the way the dog glances over at you. And you swear you almost see a smile on the dog's face. Before that dog 
looks forward again. And when the road's clear, the owner and the dog cross the road. And you cross the road, and you head into the park. And in this morning, you can see the, the way the low sun is illuminating the dew on the grass, on the cobwebs across the grass, that are waving gently in the breeze. You have this sense of almost feeling this world around you. Something that's beyond words, a connection beyond words. And you can feel the way the sun is beating on your face, warming your cheeks, the slight cool breeze breath of that early morning air. And you walk through this park. Curious how you're supposed to put this newfound knowledge, wisdom to good use. You find a tree, you relax down under the tree. You begin to think how you're supposed to put this to good use. And while you rest your back against the tree, you can hear the slight creaking of the tree swaying slightly in the breeze, the rustling of the leaves overhead, sounds of dogs running around, of owners throwing balls for dogs, the occasional sound of a jogger going past. The sounds of people cycling. And as you rest there with your eyes closed, so you hear the sound of a Tibetan bowl being struck by a mallet in your mind's eye. And it's almost as if the darkness in your mind shimmers and turns to light. And as the darkness turns to light, so you begin to have this sense of being in a temple high up in a mountain And there's someone in this temple and they walk over to you and they sit down in front of you. And they tell you that they can guide you, they can help you to learn how to make use of this knowledge. They can help you to channel your connection with the world around you. They tell you they know that you've already tested out communicating with animals. And that you can do the same with people. You can communicate with people on more levels than people think. And they clap their hands together and they rub their hands together. And they breathe deeply. And they reach out and place their hand just slightly above yours. And you have this sense at the back of your hand, like somehow they're giving off warmth or a slight static electricity feeling. And very slowly they move the hand up your body, and you have that feeling move as their hand moves. Then they move their other hand to join it up the other side of your body. Then they have both their hands near your head. 
They move their hands around the top of your head, almost touching your head, and you feel a slight tingling, static electricity kind of feeling, a slight warmth, and a deep sense of relaxation as those hands move around your head, around the back of your neck, your shoulders, and then back to your head, And they tell you that you can do the same. That you can channel that energy through you. Almost like channeling energy up through your feet. Through your body. Healing energy channeling all the way to your hands. And they tell you to open your eyes and look at them and copy them and they clap their hands together again and you do the same and then they rub their hands together and you do the same and then they tell you to gaze between those hands just move your hands slightly apart and gaze between those hands and just notice the energy between those hands and have a sense of building up that ball of energy and so you have that sense of building up and gathering up that ball of energy almost like a universal energy being gathered up between your hands and they tell you to breathe deeply and comfortably and to then Reach out and you'll have a sensation of what it feels like to use intention to move that energy around and help to interact with the energy fields of others. And so you reach out and you place your hand just above theirs and you can feel almost like your hands resting on a cool cushion of air just slightly above their hand you can feel the tingling at your palm at your fingertips as you move that hand and you close your eyes to feel even more intensely almost like you're feeling their electric field as you move that hand around their arm up their shoulders and they tell you that you're learning how to be able to channel that energy and that you can hover your hands over areas that need support and you can almost be like a conduit of cleaning out their energy passing that through to the ground, almost like creating a circuit and then passing energy back through you from the ground, from the earth, from the universe, then back into them. Just being like a conduit, not losing anything of yourself or doing anything yourself other than just being present And they have you practice this with them for a while. And they tell you you can do this for yourself as well. You can rub your hands together. You can open your hands about six or eight inches apart. You can gaze between those hands. You can notice that ball of energy there. And then you can work with that ball of energy. You can ask the healing to begin. And sometimes your eyes will stay open. Other times they'll feel like closing. And that energy will do what it needs to do as the work is done. And then once that work is complete, that energy dissipates back into the earth 
back to the universe and you feel that release like lifting a weight off your shoulders and they teach you this and they have you practice and they say you can come back here any time you want you can come back here when you sleep and dream you can come back here when you daydream what you have to do is stop take some time for yourself and you can come back here and learn more and practice more and each time you practice you can improve your ability to heal yourself and heal others as something you do almost instinctively and the more you practice the more instinctive it becomes in the same way that the more you practiced walking the more instinctive it became the more you practiced talking the more instinctive it became and then after you have this experience and they feel that it's time for you to leave this temple you find yourself back under that tree you awaken under that tree you notice the world around you seeming bright and vivid and so full of life you can see planes flying high overhead. You can watch a graceful hot air balloon, the glowing flame, knowing up close there'd be a sound there. But from back here, it's just a glowing flame in silence as it gracefully floats across the sky. You can notice birds flying in flocks and flying in formation. You can notice squirrels chasing each other around trees, dogs sniffing around, running around, butterflies and other insects going about their lives almost hyper attuned to noticing the little things in life that others overlook as you walk your way home and as you walk home you stop off at that friend's house again you pop in just to share the experience you'd had the day before with your friend and how profound that experience was. You notice that when you talk with passion, they seem deeply interested and curious. And your friend's children ask you to come out to the treehouse to have afternoon tea in the treehouse. So you squeeze yourself into their treehouse. You have some afternoon tea with the children before heading home. Almost having some lazy time to process your experiences, to take time for yourself. And that night, you sit out in the back garden, drinking a drink, gazing at the moon through your telescope, curious about when there'll be people on that moon able to gaze back at you 
through their telescopes. Feeling that sense of wonder when you look through the telescope, as if when you're looking through the eyepiece, the rest of the world fades away and you could just be floating in space with just that view through your eyes. And you watch the shooting stars, the twinkling stars in the sky, before heading in to go to bed. And you drift and float comfortably asleep, knowing that you're integrating this knowledge, this learning, and curious how all this newfound knowledge will be put to use and wondering whether you'll ever see that fairy again or whether you've seen the fairy and perhaps not recognised them maybe in your garden just thinking it's a butterfly or a firefly or some insect flying by and curious whether they'll talk to you in your normal human form. Now you have this connection. And with these thoughts in mind, you drift so peacefully, so comfortably asleep.